All right, Doug, it's time now for me to get my singing on. <laughs> Don't just stand there. What? What's the move? <laughs> you got it. All right, so we're, we're talking about the defensive rookie of the year. Little fusion. You like the singing, don't well, you? Well, we could have named the segment something else, but I purposely did this. Just a silver, a silver platter for oh, you. Ah, thank you. All right, you set me up. I'm, I'm singing to the ladies. Yeah. No. Uh, so what's the move? Defensive rookie of the year. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the odds for this one. And it's really, for the most part, a three-horse race. We got everybody on there. We're going to start with Jalen Carter, who's the odds one favorite uh, at minus 275. But looky here. Some guys just come out of nowhere. Kobe Turner. Popped up on the list here. I got a text this morning, I think it was, these days all blur together, um, where basically said, he goes, I got an NFL future for you. And he goes, I just got it added to the betting board at Caesars. So this Kobe Turner was not on the menu, the index. And he said, can you add him? And he, Caesars added him for 25 to 1. He max bet it a couple times. And now the market's down to 7 to 1. That's from 20 by the way to 7 from not on the board to all. What do I always tell you? These are fake markets. Yeah. It just shows you how much nonsense these things are and how much odds makers are really not paying attention. I'm not trying to call out a specific book, but one book will be an originator of something and then every other book will copy it. And then when it's the the board of all the lines like minus fours and over unders, it's really easy to be an odds maker. So the, to be an originator, to think outside the box and then like pay attention, it just shows you that how other books aren't paying attention. Like a good example is when one book, the first one in the market, put up the wrong line on a second half line, put up like minus three instead of plus three. Every other book copied them. They put up the wrong number too because they're just copying. If they were, you can't have the same human air all nine, all nine, seven books on the same night on the same line at the same time. It's, it's, it's no way. So it just, it's just evidence that they're copying. But here we are. The question is the voters because that's what you're handicapping. You're handicapping performance, but you're more so handicapping voters. Kobe Tucker should very much be in the conversation. He's got nine sacks for a Rams team that's going to the playoff. He's been a contributor and then some, and if he gets double digits this weekend, like that says something where Jalen Carter's just tailed off and been kind of non-factor, just like this entire Eagles team has been a non-factor. The question is, will there be lazy voters who just know that Carter is a big name? People were raving about him earlier in the season when he was playing great, but maybe he's still playing well and they're just drawing double teams. People don't really know... Like, what's going on? Maybe Tucker's playing well because Aaron Donald takes triple teams and things like that. I've talked to a couple guys who were animals with all the award stuff because yeah. there's opportunity, clearly. Uh, one thinks there's no chance because there won't be enough people aware of it and stuff like that. I mean, you have to... If if this was, like, defensive coordinators, all 32 DCs were voting, then we got a conversation. But there's NFL writers and things like that don't really know. Now, they talk to people who do know that, that they don't... They, they they take the responsibility seriously, but still there is a human element to this. And I just think I think the I think what people get enamored with some of these voting is that just because the gap's gonna be closer doesn't mean it's worth betting that you they have to win. Okay? <laughs> I still got my Alyssa Thomas up there at twenty five she should have won. This wasn't just like, hey, she's gonna come in second or something like yeah. that. Like you have to think these long shots have a shot to win. But am I going to bet to minus 275? No, but I would lay $2. So if this market starts to come down and there's more money, and now Will Anderson's got a shot too. Houston goes to the playoffs. Will Anderson has a big game. He's in the mix. I think 240 plus 240 is a fair price, but it's a three-horse race. It's not just these two. But but if it gets to minus $2, I think I have to fire. But if I lose it, I could only blame myself because I would be just betting on the fact that I think the voters are lazy and, and low-hanging fruit. So if one guy, did, one guy in this entire country didn't say, hey, can you put it on the board, the eventual winner may not have been on the betting board the entire season, which shows you how little these people pay attention. <laughs> Doug tells us how he really feels about this. Don't just stand there. What's the move? 